Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about becoming an architect. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, after two years of software engineering, I have been promoted. Congratulations. I have been promoted to a software architect. Ooh. Okay. I don't feel competent. What should I do to become effective quickly? There's nothing you can do. You are way like uh, uh, it depends, of course, on the level of uh, in of architect you're you're gonna be because there's different levels of architecture that you can be in. Uh, but you're uh, you're most likely way out of your depth. Uh, I would say that you really, really, really need, if at all possible, to get yourself a mentor quickly, because uh, architecture. Potentially, this can be one of the most complicated things that you can possibly do. I would say that, if, from my perspective, there is probably not any role on average. Now, I'm, I'm not going to give it too much credit, but on average, I think that the software architect within a, uh, within IT is probably the role that has the potential to do the absolute most amount of damage to a company and it also the room the person who has the potential to make or to really really make the difference to make a really 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 positive impact both in the business side of the company and in the technical side of the company but in order for you to uh, it, to me uh, his architect is really 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 the sort of person who needs to have one foot in both sides of the conversation. You have to be a business person and you have to be a tech person at the same time. And after two years of software engineering, you are not that person. I promise you, you are not that person. You're barely a junior developer, I would say. Uh, so what I really urge you to do is to start by first and foremost, go and look up how um, the architects you like their preferred reading because it's not just about learning how to use i don't know microservices or if you're going to use a monolithic application or you're going to use serverless or you're going to use amazon or you're going to use gcp or whatever uh, there's there's so much more to it so on the on the tech side you should go really really heavy into the high level stuff i really urge you to take a look at everything related to devops that is probably the best thing for you uh, because as an architect you definitely need to know depending on how it all depends on like w at what level are you going to be involved because it, i mean if you're going to design a distributed system for a big for a company you're going to most likely start off at the higher levels you're going to have to take in requirements you're going to have to take in requirements such as say functional requirements what like functionality and what does the system has to actually have to do uh, you're going to have to take in restrictions or technical requirements such as all right we only work in Java or we only work with MySQL or things like that and you're gonna have to gather that up and then you're gonna have to take in things such as quality requirements okay what like what SLAs are we expecting here what types of types of performance are we optimizing for all of these sorts of things you, uh, it's gonna happen at the highest levels and but at the same time as you if you're following along you're going to realize that all of that is usually happening at the infrastructure level and that is the domain of devops and operations types of people so you need to know your cloud solutions you need to know your different services and different patterns of working uh, there's also a lower level such as as i was saying there might be the case that all right we need to work in specific languages and in some cases the quality metrics are not going to be very easy to fulfill if you don't understand what the lower levels are doing an example would be let's say that you're going to create a really high performance solution well then it's probably not a good idea well if it's there's going to be a lot of input and output to i don't know build it in php or in java or something like that you might need to actually consider the language choices uh, and so so forth and the all of these sorts of technical requirements are they are they're really hard for you to learn in a short amount of time it takes years to learn how all of this fits together but if you want to get there as quickly as you can really really go heavy on reading up on uh, the dev, uh, operations and cloud solutions and then i also urge you to take a, uh, to make sure that you keep yourself in the loop 
on what's trendy because that is I'm very sorry to say a very sustainable way for you to survive as an architect you can simply repeat what other people are telling you it's very dangerous and this is the thing that I really do believe I, I've seen it happen more than once this these are the worst architects they, they, they are the people who they don't actually have an experience. All they do is that they do literally the same thing as the philosopher programmers do. It's just that they are in a position of power where they can actually make this thing happen. And there are many companies who have been crippled by an architect who, I don't know, believes that uh, service meshes is the future or that microservices are the future when the company, like the, and they didn't really account for the requirements of the company. They just took a popular solution without understanding the problem that they were dealing with and it, create, it creates a really really big problem so that's one thing you can do go really heavy into operations and devops related content and read up what read the same articles that other that the other architects are reading that's the technical part but there's also a soft skills part i was mentioning earlier to you that you're going to have to uh, figure out what types of requirements you need and that is the business side of the thing you need to be involved in understanding the people who make make up your sales department and your business strategic departments and so forth because you need to understand what the company needs are you need to be a people person more than you possibly can imagine an architect is nowhere near going to spend as much time uh, coding as sitting in meetings and talking to people because basically when people want you to be involved is at the planning stage it's at the stage when you talk with the customer and try to figure out okay what thing what solution do we need to build here and all of those discussions require you to be able to work to behave in a very confident and grown-up fashion and speak the lingo because your stakeholders are going to be everything from well depending on where you are it might be people in their 50s who've never ever touched a digital system but like they're they represent all this massive business type of uh, th this massive uh, payday for your company and you're going to have to make them trust you you're going to have to be able to answer their questions and in some cases you're uh, this is also hilarious if you're going to be uh, in some cases they're going to have their own architect and that person might not just have two years of experience they might have 30 years of experience and sit in on a meeting and if 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 you uh, you need to get to a point where you can emotionally deal with this and that usually takes a while so I highly urge you to uh, as I said the best thing is to get yourself a mentor if that's not feasible for you read up on the soft skills like really go in and find go and find articles about business management and like from the perspective of a software architect and try to find a few bloggers who talk about the, the this part there are many 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 different um, articles that you can read about dealing with stakeholders and setting expectations and project management and things like that project management is a very good area for you to look into because that is the f other 50 percent of what you have to do in order to be a su successful architect so what i want you to take away from this is that i think that after two years of software engineering you are way out of your depth if you're if you become a software architect it depends of course on the company because i might be overestimating the role that you have you might be working at this tiny little company that doesn't do all that advanced things i mean a junior developer can be a software engine a software architect if you're selling i don't know landing pages to a pizzeria that's probably going to be feel comfortable to you but for most cases and software architect needs to be 50% a product owner or product manager and 50% a uh, a tech person and it takes a lot of time uh, before you're ready for that sort of role at at least at especially at the larger scales but if you want to get there as quickly as possible make sure that you're reading the same materials like there's many 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 bloggers and articles around different architects and like how they do work and so forth don't just focus on the tech skills the tech stuff but make sure that you're doing that as well uh, it's very really important for you to have a good understanding of operations and cloud solutions and cloud native types of things which is the main focus areas these days and the, apart from that make sure that you're reading up on the latest tools even at the lower levels at the application level so you understand what tooling that uh, developers use and then lastly make sure that you are also uh, in, in tune with how the company works you need to be a people person you need to understand business in order to be an effective architect and as you can imagine this is going to be a rough ride for you 
but it's also if you can get through it it's going to develop you enormously have a great day